Hey, good morning, everyone. Trackman44 here. Um, I was not going to go ahead and show you guys exactly what I got to do, but I'm facing a bit of a dilemma. For the first time in 44 years, we've got a reasonably major uh, issue going on with this old homemade wood splitter. I've got some videos back in the past highlighting, you know, how my much older brother built this back in 1978, and then I'd done a little finagling and trading, and I traded him in Oliver 77, and that, eh, you know, big long story. But anyway, we have had n no serious mechanical issues or failures, uh, but I'm, I'm facing one right now. And what that is, is right here we've got a splined coupling that goes to this splined input shaft on the hydraulic pump. The splines are completely stripped out. The splines inside the coupling and the splines are rounding off, are almost completely rounded off of the spline shaft. Now this pump was an old pump whenever, whenever it was used in 1978 to build it. So this pump owes us absolutely nothing. So I've been dreading this moment, but uh, now's the time. So I'm going to have to do something that uh, is not the way to do it. Believe me, it is not. But I've already got a backup plan in case this doesn't work. But what I'm going to do, well, I've actually taken the set screw out, and I've drilled that hole fairly large, like about a half inch, right down to the shaft, and I burnished that shaft a little bit. And it is a hardened shaft, so I can't drill all the way through it with the tools I've got and put a roll pin in it or anything like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap a wet rag around that input shaft to keep that seal as cool as possible and then I'm going to go ahead and hit this really really quick burn into it and hopefully get some penetration in that hardened steel shaft and then I'm going to quit welding real quick and then throw some water on that rag to kind of make sure that seal stays cool then I'm going to repeat the process and then once I get that done I'm going to roll it to the other side remove the opposing set screw off drill that hole bigger and do exactly the same thing there now the set screws are only there because about four years ago We'd be splitting along and I could feel it jump, a spline. We'd be going along and for no reason at all you could feel it jump, jump. Just ever so often. But then it got worse and it got worse. Uh, and so now it's to the point to where the two grade 8 set screws will not hold it. So we're going to do what's necessary to get this thing working for a little while. But like I say, I've already got a backup plan for when it fails. And fail it will. Uh, because this is not the thing to do with hydraulics this close to a hydraulic seal. Mark my words on that one. But hey, if you guys are interested in this thing... This is a part takeoff rig, and it's built with just old uh, farm machinery components and industrial components. Like this is a cylinder off of a Ford backhoe. Uh, we actually took the end off of it, cut it off, and re-welded the end to make it shorter. And I forgot the exact GPM capacity on the pump. At one point, I thought it was 44 GPM, but it's not. I think my much older brother told me it's 28 gallons per minute, single stage, which is why it has such a rapid cycle, uh, cycle time. And it's got that, that fancy A-framed kneeling axle that'll allow us to go ahead and let this thing go all the way down on the ground or raise it back up to whatever height you know that's convenient for you and it, it's built out of some all scrap material essentially all scrap salvage material old stuff that was destined to be thrown away and you know that's just the way uh, that's the way the much older brother and myself roll actually he spends a lot more money than I do but he's got a lot more money to spend but that's another story so I'm going to go ahead and burn a little bit of 6010 down in there real quick because there is a little bit of rust and 6010 is really good for burning through that rust and allow it to flow to the top. So I'm going to burn that a little bit with 6010 then we might just plug it with 7018 I don't know yet. This is just going to be a quick touch or two and I got the, wrap, the wet rag on there and wrapped tightly up against the seal and I got the water sitting right here to go ahead and douse it down but I do want to embed this in those rubbed off splines down there on that shaft as good as what I can. I'm going to go ahead and touch it one more time. i got to blow that water out of there, though. I don't know. We may get lucky. The title of this video should be What Not to Do to Repair a Hydraulic Connector. I'm just going to rotate this around to the other set screw. Don't have to worry about the backlash now. I'm going to remove this set screw right here. Uh, make sure this is still cool. We're going to drill that hole bigger just like we did the other side. We're going to duplicate the effort right over here. Now that's not one of my most stellar repairs, but it's farmerized at its best. <laughs> it got a little uncomfortable to the touch, but I hopefully not up at the seal. Well, we're going to go ahead and try out that repair job on the wood splitter. I'm going to power it this afternoon with uh, with this old Master Harris Model 30. It's about a 1950, maybe a 1951. As you can tell, it receives its power off the power takeoff, so it's going to be turning 540 RPM 
but the gearing off of a, an old field chopper increases the RPMs to, I can't remember, but I think around 3600 to run that single stage pump. And then of course you can see the arm on the push block and that's going to allow us to lower the, uh, the beam to whatever level it is that I want to work at, put a block underneath it, take the arm off and go ahead and work. But that's uh, fully adjustable in, in that respect.
Well, that wasn't much of a workout, but it was enough for us to uh, determine that the, the the welding apparently did not do any damage to the rubber seal around that uh, input shaft on that hydraulic pump. So I'm actually quite happy with that. Like I said, this wasn't much of, much of a workout, you know, I guess, what, maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so, you know. But it was some good wood, uh, two or three different kinds of oak there. Uh, one of them, a couple of them about this big, the sap wood was pretty pretty well dry, so those those will be not too much but the rest of the the red oak and a white oak whatever it was uh pin oak possibly uh that all looked really really pretty good yeah i'm happy with it i think the um, i think the operation was a success it's going to get us by for a while but like i said that's not the way to repair that hydraulic thing absolute no no way but i couldn't get the parts to re take it apart and replace that shaft uh just unavailable to me probably could have taken it to a hydraulic shop i didn't want to spend the money on it you know because it was so old and so it's like, you know, that's the alternative. Do what we did, let it run, let her go till she blows, and whenever she blows, go back to the uh, alternative plan that I've got uh, got in my mind, you know what I mean? So, hey, you know what? This has been a fun couple of minutes. That's it's my first pleading for the uh, for the fall, and there probably will be a considerable more because, as you can tell, we got quite a bit of pile of wood around here, and uh, we got to get her busted up and get it in there. This is actually kind of embarrassing because by this time in the year, I typically, between myself, my son, and my son-in-law, we have all three sections of this uh, woodshed. It's 39 feet long, and it's uh, 10 and a half feet tall on average. And we typically have this thing full by this time of year because we try to keep three years ahead. We are not going to make it this time. Just too many irons in the fire, too much, too much going on. Just did not get the shed filled. So right now we got a little bit of a an opportunity the weather's nice cool i'm gonna get as much split as i can in a in a quick time uh and then go back to work on some other stuff you know what thanks a lot for hanging in there if you uh, hang hung in this long and uh, this is tracking man 44 and i'm out of here guys